Brought to you by Almond Auctions, the worldwide leader in antique tractor auctions. For some classic tractors, the days in the fields have long since passed. But that's not the case for Chris Wathen's Big Bud, which is still hard at work in southern Indiana. This tractor, it's a, it's a 1981 uh, Big Bud 525-50, which those numbers mean 525 horse and the 50 is the series. They basically built two different tractors. They built, and they refer to them as small frame and large frame. This one's a large frame. I purchased it in 2004 from Ron Harmon in Haver, Montana. And uh, it, it sat there until we restored it in 2009 and uh, it's been a working tractor for us since then. Big Bud tractors were made by the Northern Manufacturing Company in the late 70s and 80s, and the 52550 was the most popular model of all the Buds. With its 1,150 cubic inch, six cylinder Cummins engine, this tractor could tear through a field without any trouble. It's a great engine. Everybody you know, that's ever had one has, has really liked them. I wouldn't call it fuel efficient. It does, it does like fuel. But uh, you know, in the end, it, 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 what really matters is how much, you, how much work you get done with the amount of fuel that you use. I mean, you, you take a finishing tool like this and uh, uh, you can run at seven mile an hour pretty easy and you can cover a lot of ground in a day. Big Buds are known for a couple of innovations, including tilt cabs and a skid system for removing the engine. Chris has modified his tractor to add one handy feature, hydraulics on the hood and the cab that allow them to open by remote control. Not only was the 52550 big and powerful, it was also well built. You can tell by the number of them that are still in use today. They're not scrapping them out. So you know, as far as we know, I mean, there may have been a few over the course of the years that have been scrapped, but for the most part, uh, we believe most of them are still working. I think that longevity does say a lot for the tractor itself. In fact, uh, when Bud was being built, they, they used the best of everything. It, it was actually overbuilt, and that could have been one of the things that hurt them so bad in the 80s was the economy was so bad that these tractors had kind of priced themselves out of the business. But it doesn't take you very long to sit in the seat of one and, and drive one and maintain one to realize they were overbuilt and they were over-engineered and, and they, they did. They had the best of everything. Every part was the best that they could find. It took Chris five years to fully restore this big bud and get it looking as good as it does today. No easy task considering the size of the tractor. Restoring this tractor is a lot different. You know, I'd previously restored other things, motorcycles, cars, you know, uh, early, older, early tractors, but uh, yeah, the challenges with something this big, obviously the parts are bigger and heavier and things that you don't think about. The injuries are bigger than a normal injury too. And another thing you don't think about too is the tools that are required to work on it. You know, it, it, we had to get larger tools. I don't know that I really knew what I was getting into when I got this bud, other than the fact that it was, you know, extremely large. but. The more that I worked on it, the more that I learned about it, I'm glad that I chose the bud. You think working on tractors this big is a problem? Try storing them. The tractors in Chris's collection all have one thing in common. They're big. So finding a place to put everything takes a lot of effort. Storage is always a challenge, yeah. Yeah, I mean, in the wintertime, if you go around in our barns, it looks like everything was put in with a, a shoehorn. We have about... 30 four-wheel drives, articulated four-wheel drives. Obviously, this would be one. We have another big bud, which is a HN 250, one of the first ones made. Another highlight would be uh, there was only one WA 24 Wagner. We have it, and uh, we have the serial number one of the, the first red Steiger that was built, uh, which is a 4366, uh, but it is the first one. I don't know, there's something about the articulated tractors that, uh, that really just fascinates me and, and that's what actually pulls my trigger. So, And everybody has a, has a passion, you know, whether it be sewing machines or big buds. Chris's classic tractor fever shows no signs of slowing down despite the challenges of collecting such large tractors. It's not a fever, it's a disease. It's worse than a fever, and, and I've yet to find a cure for it. So, um, 
Yeah, do you know of any? I've tried everything to, to try and fix it, but, and you know, in the end, I don't know if I want it fixed. I don't know if I want it cured. I can live with it.